Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Sally and this is Didsbury Art Studio. And in today's video, I have got a corker for you. We are going to be using up scraps of fabrics and we're going to be doing some free motion embroidery and using Christmassy fabrics and colours. So shall we get into it? What we're going to use in today's video is some bonder web, some scraps of fabrics that I've got left over from projects. I've got two pieces of wool fabric and I've got two pieces of organza there as well. And I'll be using my scissors, I'm going to be ironing and I'm also going to be using the sewing machine. So what I am doing here is I'm unfolding all the bond web. Now I would have used iron-on interfacing because I think it's going to be a little bit quicker. So if you've got any of that, probably use that. But because I had some bond web left over, I'm going to use it. So I'm just cutting out a piece of fabric there the size of the bond web. Layla's come to join me in the background. There we go. And I'm also going to do two samples today. So I'm just cutting out a second piece of bonder web. So the bonder web that I've got is paper on one side and a sort of textured film on the other. And it is such handy stuff to use. You can use it for so much. So those are those two done. And I'm going to keep all those scraps there, but I'm just moving them out of the way. Little did I know that a little cat is going to crush the pile. Lovely. Okay, so I'm just moving everything out of the way, clearing the decks and getting the ironing board out and the iron. And what you need to do now is... <clears throat> Just iron the fabric on top of the bonder web. So I'm using quite a high heat and I've actually just put the fabric onto baking parchment um, just because I don't want to wreck the top of the ironing board because it can go all over the place. <clears throat> if you've used Excuse me. If you've used bonder web before, it can go all sticky all over your ironing cover, and I don't want that. So, I recommend that you put something down anyway. I'm losing my voice this morning, and so what I'm doing now is I've got a scrap bit of scrap bits bag um, of fabrics left over from previous projects, and I just keep everything basically in the drawer. And I'm just scattering lots of bits of different thicknesses of fabrics, usually quite thin fabrics, but there's a couple of bits of fleecy bits in there. And then I'm covering it with the red organza fabric. And then I have put baking parchment over the top and just ironed it all together. Have you taken over all that bonder web, Layla? you some crease now so I'm going to do the next one and for the next one I've already pulled the paper off the bonder web and so it's got that sticky film on my base fabric and I'm just chopping all the threads sorry all the well I'm saying threads I've used a couple of threads in there as you'll see in a minute but cutting up scraps of fabrics and <clears throat> I've gone on to pulling out sort of pinky ready fabrics that I've got in a drawer which you can see to the right of the table there and I'm just organising this one slightly different so I'm going to leave more gaps in between 
the scraps of fabric so that when I iron on the top layer of organza that there's a little bit more for the organza to stick to in between the scrap bits of fabrics if you see what I mean. So this time I'm using a few different colours. I'm getting some pale pinks in there, some cotton fabrics. And I found a little bit of Angelina fibres, if you've ever used those before. I've thrown those in, but you can use feathers and all sorts of different things trapping in between, as long as it's not too thick. So I'll just carry on and finish that off. Okay, so finally, I think I've got enough different textures going on in there. Just making sure it's fairly even. Oh, you're feeling left out. So yeah, that's, I think that's probably enough. This time I'm gonna add this organza over the top. Actually, there's one more thing I wanna try. I got these the other day, B&M bargain, and I'm going to cut a few of those in. Let's give it a whirl. I can never get enough bling. Let's have a bit of that in there. Um, maybe a bit of this one. Maybe a bit of this one. Okay, that's hot. Okay. So. Okay, so that's how it's looking right now and now we're going to do a bit of stitching just to hold it down but yeah it's all totally ironed on and we will get into some stitching. doing here is just sewing down using a runner stitch all over the bits of fabrics. I can change my stitch to a zigzag as well. I was doing this in school just to say that I would use an embroidery hoop to scoop the fabric in just for safety in the classroom. So here's the next one. Funny little meow noises. You're going to be asleep in about two seconds. Those are the finished results. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to use the heat gun and burn away some of this organza on top. I may well do, but this is how they're looking so far. I used a combination of the zigzag stitch and also the straight stitch and it's got bundles of different types of fabrics thrown in there and I've tried to keep it fairly even all over and hope you like them. They're fairly thin and you could add other colours of threads. They're really textural. And you can do other themes as well. enjoyed this video today and let me know in the comments if this is a textile technique that you've done before and it's kind of free motion embroidery using scrap materials 
If you enjoyed this video today, definitely give me a like and if you're new today, please subscribe. That would be more than helpful and I'd love to see you again. I will just see you in the next video and if you have any comments or you have any suggestions about other videos you'd like me to try and do, I'll see you very soon. Bye! Layla, you can say bye to everyone. Are you sitting on my fabric slashing? <laughs> Me?